We've got two books from Frederick Lewis Allen. I promised you some readings from this one which we will get. The Big Change, America Transforms Itself, 1900 to 1950. Uh, but we're also going to read from, which I didn't promise you, The Lords of Creation. Uh, we're going to get some more information from Paul Johnson, uh, History of the American People. Um, he says no satisfactory explanation has ever been provided for the events of the Great Depression uh, and what it led up to them. Let me just quote that. What follows is an attempt to make historical sense of a tragic series of events for which no satisfactory explanation has yet been provided. We're going to read from that sentence onward. And American History, a survey, 7th edition. Richard Current, uh, Harry Williams, Frank Friedel, and Alan Brinkley. This piece of garbage is what we'll start with, I guess. Because why not get it out of the way? From page 704, um, well, this is, on the this is the second page of chapter 25, The Great Depression. Page 704, The Causes of the Depression. Get ready. The nation's economy had been showing some signs of distress for months before October 29. Business inventories of all kinds were three times as large as they had been a year before, an indication that the public was not buying products as rapidly as in the past, and other signposts of economic health. Freight carloads, industrial production, wholesale prices were slipping downward. The extraordinary performance of the stock market kept many Americans from noticing these alarming signs, but the bull market was, in fact, an artificial phenomenon, flourishing at a time when the nation was already sliding into recession. Now, I don't believe that the bull market was an artificial phenomenon. Uh, the recession obviously was real, but would have been an adjustment. I believe it would have been an adjustment, and if you look at the fact that we had uh, recessions and depressions within the Great Depression, there was more going on than just a business cycle. Something else was definitely there, as we've seen, its government controls. The fact that they think of the 20s boom as an artificial phenomenon is strange. We'll be getting some stuff from here, from Frederick Lewis Allen, that uh, repudiates that notion. Anyways, this would have just been a readjustment. Uh, the government getting into it turned it into the debacle that it was. It, it, it's a necessary readjustment, you know, it's, it's no, no, there, there shouldn't be any reason that bankers shouldn't end up shining shoes once in a while. Economists and other observers have argued for decades about what was principally responsible for this economic decline. Most agree, however, that many factors were involved. There was, first, a serious lack of diversification in the American economy in the 1920s. Now here we have a hint of what the 20s was all about. Prosperity had been excessively dependent on a few basic industries, notably construction and automobiles. In the late 1920s, those industries began to decline. Between 1926 and 29, expenditures on construction fell from 11 billion to under 9 billion. Automobile sales began to decline somewhat later, but in the first nine months of 1929, they declined by more than a third once these two crucial industries began to weaken, there was not enough strength in other sectors of the economy to take up the slack. Now I pause here to mention a couple of factors on the world scene. Uh, throughout the 20s, America was borrowing massive sums of money to Europe, uh, and America was investing in Germany, uh, Japan, and Italy. Now that couldn't go on forever because those countries were status dictatorships and maybe not at the time of our investment but they were headed down that road and ended up becoming uh, status dictatorships that confiscated the wealth that uh, we had invested. The, those investments were just lost. Now throughout the 20s a lot of the money we put in over there was treated as wealth. People who invested in 26 and 27 and 28 in Germany thought they owned part of the Brinkerhoff Corporation or whatever, and they borrowed and got a house or whatever on it. That, I think, is something that can't be ignored. I, I haven't seen much addressing it, 
But uh, the fact that America was the world's largest source of capital, that a great deal of our capital went into black holes, out of which it didn't come, and against which we later had to fight wars, um, I think that that can't be ignored. Just the rising tide of statism around the world confiscated some of our wealth. Um, and then, to kick a man while he's down, American uh, statesmen implemented all kinds of status control controls here at home. Fascism on us as if we weren't brutalized enough around the world. Skipping half a paragraph, in the middle of the paragraph we recontinue. Even in 1929, after nearly a decade of economic growth, more than half of the families in America lived on the edge of or below the minimum subsistence level. More than half of the families in America in, in 1929 more than half of the families were too poor to share in the great consumer boom of the 20s, too poor to buy the cars and houses and other goods in industrial uh, economy, the, uh, the industrial economy was producing, too poor in many cases even to buy adequate food and shelter for themselves. I don't know what the hell that is. That's bullshit. That's the stupidest bullshit I've ever read. And then the next sentence is, as long as corporations had continued to expand their capital facilities, their factories, warehouses, heavy equipment, and other investments, the economy had flourished, period. By the end of the 20s, however, blah, 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 blah. What does it mean to say that half of the people were too poor to afford food and clothes and that the, the economy was flourishing while corporations were building themselves up? What the hell is that? It's all in one paragraph. Stupid tripe. They don't even test it for consistency before they start teaching it to kids. This is probably a college textbook, but I think it might be high school text. I don't know. By the end of the 1920s, capital investment had created more plant space than could profitably be used, and factories were pouring out more goods than consumers could purchase. It doesn't even mention, doesn't even mention here, the tariff acts. doesn't mention them. We'll get that information over here, though. It, <laughs> it, it doesn't even bring up the statist intervention things. I mean, it should, it should at least mention that we in implemented tariffs to help protect our labor unions. But it doesn't even mention it that. It's like they, they don't want to bring it up. They know they're guilty. Okay, a third major problem was the credit structure of the economy. Farmers were deeply in debt. Their land mortgaged, crops prices too low to allow them to pay off what they owed. Now, I think this here might actually be one of the causes. Uh, as we've seen, the government was really sticky, had its hands all over in the farming sector, trying to get people to get their own land and trying to borrow the money if they couldn't, didn't have the same purchasing power they had before the war. All kinds of ridiculous plans came about some of that in the depression but a great deal of that throughout the twenties to try to help them because as many people point out or believe the farmers were in a depression starting in like 1921 they never had good times in the twenties I think that's clearly nonsense some, some farmers obviously had good times uh, otherwise we wouldn't have went on continuing to produce farms would have went broke but they didn't I think the ones that consolidated and mechanized are the ones that that came out on top and did better. It's, I mean, it's obvious. There's no other way that it could have happened. But the fact that the government was there trying to prevent that, to slow that, to retard it, to change that back to the old way, back to the single individual family farm that uh, is a, you know, the good old days. The fact that the government was in there on that, preventing, here's a bunch of people who could be productive else, elsewhere in the economy. Who knows how many? 10% of farmers, 20, 30, 40% of farmers could have left the farm and we still would have had enough to eat. Uh, and, and they could have been doing something productive to purchase stuff from the farmers who should have been using mechanization and larger gatherings of land. But no, the government wanted small farms. So there's uh, several causes they assert to the Great Depression, some of which are a little more valid than others. Now, I just have one more quote from this book, just uh, two pages on now, or page 707, uh, under a title, The American People in Hard Times. Let me just have a quote here, one quick little quote. 
Someone asked the British economist John Maynard Keynes in the 1930s whether he was aware of any historical era comparable to the Great Depression. Yes, Keynes replied.